Hey everyone, welcome back to This Is The Police. We are Jack Boyer, I think that's who we're called. Chief of Police, we retire in six months and we're trying to make half a million dollars. To do so, we've been helping some shady characters out and some very shady characters out, namely Christopher Sands. Also, Kendrick, who was like the internal, like, you know, bitch of the Mafia. That's now us. We're the bitch of the Mafia, unfortunately. The whore of the Mafia, I think they called it. Just to save Kendrick's life, to let his family escape, we agreed that we'd be this line inside the police to, like, help the Mafia. And so far, honestly, we've basically always helped Christopher Sand when we could do. The mayor, on the other hand, we haven't helped it at all, I think, so... We're going to have to readdress that balance a little bit, you know. we made a lot of money so far. Well, not on the YouTube videos, of course, because they're just getting demonetized because of the music I'm listening to, but... Sod it! I like the music. And honestly, I don't make any money anyway, because my channel's tiny. So let's carry on listening to smooth jazz and just enjoying ourselves. Jensen didn't come to work today. Hmm, did you not, Jensen? Is Jensen a new policeman as well? We'll see what to do about that. Right, let's find some nice music. I don't quite remember what we listened to or didn't listen to last time. I don't recognise this. Bud meets Bob. Ooh, baby. Honestly, just the music I need after the Isaac run I had. I don't want to spoil it because, you know, I literally just... I, oh, sorry, I'll be putting this up next week. Whereas Isaac will probably go up, like, before then. Uh, maybe I'll go up after then, sorry, is what I mean. Anyway. I don't want to spoil that video, but a big thing happens. Depending on the order of things, and I can't work it out in my head right now. These honestly might come out on the same day, in fact. You'll know what I mean when you see it. Anyway. So, a trespassing on a farm. Bill Buckler reports that two unidentified men snuck onto his farm and set fire to the barn. As the call came in, the two criminals were attempting to gain entry into the house. Hmm. Okay. I don't think we send Stovall on this one, but Samady, you have some stripes. Get out there and take Fang and Grant with you. We also got a paddy weapon at the end of last time for helping some truckers out or something. I don't remember. Oh, they refuse to give me a job slot because we're not helping the mayor at all. Does that stop me from doing another one? Yes, I can't request another one. That hurts, but we'll get around it. But yeah, I think this time I'm going to ignore Christopher Sands if I can. We've made $49,000 so far, but, you know, we have to start helping the mayor instead. A drug addict attempted to hide in an expensive bottle of liquor under his jacket. When he was caught, he began to throw a fit. Shaw and Iwaze, go get them. There are no signs of the criminals near the house, so this is the trespassing on the farm. The front door has been broken down and shadows lurk inside. Come out with your hands up, go through the front entrance, or go to the back door. I'm going to say come out with your hands up. Offender caught, officers unharmed. What a lovely start to this uh, day. I say start the day, it's 11 in the morning. Well, come back to the office now and get some donuts. You've all earned it. Sure. Sorry, not sure. Samadhi, Fang, and Grant, you've definitely earned them. You can have nice pink ones with sprinkles on it. A beautiful. Strawberry filling, your favourite. You might be a lot lucky, but Samadhi has a bit of a sweet tooth. Jack, one of our new guys tried to rape our accountant. We locked him up in a hotel room, but he's threatening to hand the whole organisation over to the police. I think it's time he talks to a police officer face to face. You know what? I said we weren't going to help him, but for this, raping an accountant, not acceptable. Theft report. We caught the offender, officers unharmed. I love to see it. Sure, Samadhi, you're getting close to Stovall's uh, record. Or even Purdy on the B shift. They're like our A team. Jack, we have something going down today at City Centre at 8.39. $1,000? No. And by 8.39 it was 18.39 I think, so, you know. It's coming up. But quite a day so far. 
But well, obviously crime never sleeps because of an assault with a deadly weapon at the parking lot. A woman reports that she saw a skinhead. <sighs> this bald racism here, but anyway. Attacking a dark-skinned valet. Striking him around the legs yelling, I'll beat you till you're dead, freak. No shit, I'm going to do it. She believes she saw a pistol sticking out of the skinhead's bell. Stovall, you have to get out. And you know what? We'll give you Shaw. Iwase. And you know what? Take Fang as well. I didn't see if I could see send SWAT for that, but I don't think I could. By the way, are there any investigations going right now? Nope. No active gangs. We cleared the gang up, but unfortunately a day late for the mayor to be happy. Like, literally the morning afterwards, we, like, sorted it out, but... It is what it is. It happens. Okay, we're in the night shift. The situation is more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcements. Bloomingdale, Grant. Get over there. Ooh, attempted murder. A man in an expensive suit is lying in the street. He seems like he's been shot, but no one saw who shot him. Or from where? Is this the thing that I'm meant to be ignoring? We're not ignoring it, though. I honestly don't know. We might get something else pop up literally a second later, and I'm going to be really cheesed off if we do. Because I'm trying to stop all the crime today. Dangerous as well to send two people to an attempted murder. And I'd like to send SWAT or something with them. So, we're hoping for officer on harm there. The man was uh, just being placed on a stretcher with another shot rings out. This time the shooter finishes the job. His firing position could not be determined, but the shots are clearly coming from one of the skyscrapers. Carefully observe the area. Rush the skyscraper to the left. Rush to the right. Just carefully observe. Offender caught. Officer dead. Birch Jr. No! Unlucky Birch Jr. Uh, by the way, this probably means that I would like to hire a new police officer. If I may. Okay, I still don't have the cop slot yet. Harold Calhoun, though. Sounds good. Sand. Disappointed. Yes, I know. Assault with a deadly weapon. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Civilian unharmed. Well, well, great job there, team. Couldn't get the words out. Now, please can get back to the station within 20 seconds, because I would like to do this attempted robbery. Again, I don't know if this changes the more I leave the time. Samadhi's back. Got it. Suburb. Attempted robbery. Eight-year-old Kevin is at home alone, hiding under the bed. Unknown... Okay. Unknown persons are gathered outside the apartment door. I don't know why it keeps clicking off the window like that. It's kind of annoying. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'll send Samadhi and I'll send Fang too. I think this is like, you know, this might be a false thing, but who knows? You know, it'll turn out to be like, oh, it's just my old dog, Rufus. Like, no. Nah. It's like, oh yeah, thanks, kid. So, you have to check these out. What if it is a dangerous man coming into the building? He doesn't know it's Rufus. Oh, it's more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcements. Stovall, sure. Get there. Keep this eight-year-old alive. You know, keeping people up. It's two in the morning. They're going to hear these sirens going off. Everyone's going to be waking up and going like, geez, what the hell's going on? And then they'll look out and it's all proud boys in blue. Nine, ten, eight, Report. Offender caught. Officer unharmed. Excellent work. Excellent work. Birch Jr. Ripperonis. Uh, I could delay the paperwork. I don't think we do that. I think we're going to declare him dead again. Because I really want the officer slot. Because I just lost one recently because the mayor's kind of angry with me. So let's deal with that. No investigations either. Interesting. In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favorite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached. Couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. 
No more days off to go fishing. But my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's gotta be honored. And to stay faithful to the tradition, you've gotta respect the standard rituals. When you're about to roll out of the club, you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. If your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time, I only got up to 60. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. This asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vickis Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. He appeared out of nowhere, and with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius, and more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, He'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Not the best time to talk, Mr. Varga. No, oh, you know my name. I'm flattered. Although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manners. Like they say in your fair city, with the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. And one of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. Oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? You've been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freeburg quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around, but I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. You wake up in the morning full of ideas, and by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. But there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. Pooping and vomiting at the same time. Got to be careful, it's going to create a low pressure inside your stomach somewhere. You know, start a little fucking black hole or something. Honestly, it sounds a bit like he's caught a little bit of Vicus Vargas, if you know what I mean. Anyway. Uh, Orthodox Priest Bride Mayor. Greek Priest to be appointed Head of Freeburg Orthodox Church. And Student Volunteer to Help Farmers. Why don't we just help the farmers? You know, earn our money slowly. 
Although I guess I am a 60 year old man with a bad back, so maybe not the best plan. Anyway, I'm going to channel my inner uh, Jack Boyd here and crack open a beer. And get some on my keyboard. Try not to get a bit of that Vickers Vargas going around. My morning ritual was plagued by the smell of Vickers Vargas fruity cologne. It was like the sharp citrus scent was chasing me around the house, as if Vickers was right there in my living room. When I finally realized the smell was coming from a big basket of oranges, it didn't put me any more at ease. I'd opened my door to lots of threatening mail, evidence of criminal wrongdoing, even a dead ferret or two. But fruit? Never. Delicious. You the fruit guy? Excuse me? Was it you that brought the basket of oranges? Nah, it was here when I arrived. Fine. So who are you? Today, I'm your driver. And uh, where are we driving? To work. That's it? Yeah, we have to make an important stop along the way. Where? The ranch. What ranch? Just the ranch. Fine. The morning seemed surreal, and I took in the magic. Why wreck it with meaningless chatter? As my tight-lipped chauffeur drove an hour through God knows where, I started to feel like I was in the middle of a bad dream, probably lying bloody and concussed in the alley behind the old colony club, my nose buried in a rotten orange peel. But no, this was no dream. The silence was real, the sound of the engine was real, the dust was real enough too. And there was the ranch over the horizon. It all seemed familiar. The Sand family's overbearing mansion has been the talk of the headlines for decades, but few have managed to get closer than a few miles. I guess I'm just lucky. Is this ranch in Fallout 3 or something? It's very beige. I think we've upset sand, maybe. Hello? I didn't know you took private meetings, Mr. Sand. Only if I expect good company. I'm surprised my company ranks at all. Today, yes. Today is a special day. So it seems. Do you often go to the old colony club, Jack? Every week. Meet any interesting people there? As a rule, no. Sometimes you make a date, right? Sometimes make new friends. Sometimes, I guess. But that's not why I go. And why? I consider it a hobby. Hmm. A hobby? Do you know anything about my hobbies? Well, judging by the half-dozen animal skins I stepped on walking over here, it's not much of a reach to say you like hunting. Love it. Well, I say that now. It seemed so tedious when I was a child. It took ever so long. But now, I'm older. I've developed a new talent. Oh, what talent is that? Patience. The will to wait for the right moment. Let's say you want a deer. You know, you deserve it. You've even decided what dishes its meat will go to and where you'll mount its horns. But to get that deer, you've got to wait. To sit in the bushes and stay nice and quiet. Professional hunters will tell you that the hunt is a rare craft. There are many rules. It's shrouded in mystery and ancient skill. Well, that's all complete nonsense. <coughs> to get a deer, you just sit on the sidelines for a long enough time, pinpoint the moment when it's finally time to shoot. I learned the talent, Jack. But not like you, oh, Jack. You truly are the master. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Jack. I know about the half million. I know your plan. Kendrick told me everything. Needless to say, I'm impressed. While some people learn to hold their breath for minutes on end and not to rustle the leaves too loudly, why you decided to just become the foliage. You turned yourself into a bush, 
surrounded by deer who've been so fruitfully multiplying for decades. But all this time, you've held your rifle at the ready. Uh, forgive an old man his imagery, Jack. I have the heart of a poet, I confess. Look, I don't know what was said between you and Kenrick, but it sounds like you got it wrong. Oh, I think I understand everything just fine. And I think we understand each other quite well. Jack, in the coming war, we'll make excellent partners. What war? One war falls upon every generation. My grandfather drove out the Ambersons back when he was 27. My father destroyed that psychopath gangster, Boris Bell, when he was a sprightly 30. At 69, I'd begun to think my war had passed me over. But my time has come at last. Vargas. Tomorrow, Vicus Varga declares war, and I'm obliged to answer. So, we're talking about Varga now. I don't know how he thinks. I don't even know whether he plans his actions or not. I can't divine his purpose. Hell, I don't even know where he comes from. He's a man not of our breed, wouldn't you say? But when he arrived here, I invited him in, told him we could work together. An official invitation penned in my own hand and written on some very expensive paper. And can you imagine his reply? A fruit basket. What sense can be made of such a message? I guess it means whatever you want it to. Precisely. I'm late for work, Mr. Sand. You know, Jack, I could just give you half a million right now. Cash, whatever denominations you like. But I would never insult you so. If I went stalking my prey for so many years, I wouldn't want someone else to shoot it for me. I understand you, Jack. And I'll never ask you for anything that's contrary to your nature. Just think about our conversation. Think about it. And call me. Like I said, it's a whole new life, and I've had to give up some old habits. One of them, keeping away from things that don't concern me. Now I can't afford the luxury. This spotlight I'm under, concerns is all I got. Oh, help Vickers Varga or help Christopher Sand. Honestly, I think we know where we stand with Christopher Sand more than we do with Vickers Varga. The oranges were nice, but, you know... He was interrupting us while we were pooping and vomiting at the same time. Sand invited us to a lovely country mansion. We're going to help Christopher Sand. Also, he has the half million already, apparently, so... Tell him it's boy. I'm too tired, I can hardly walk through it. Can I go home? Yes. You are exhausted, that is fine. What you're exhausted doing, I don't know, Debrito. Anyway, we have basically a full roster here. Purdy, the 100%er, is here. Timson, pretty good as well. Let's start the day. Again, we get to choose our music. Haven't we picked this one before? Temptation Blues, maybe we have. Maybe we haven't, actually. I don't recognise it. Okay, City Hall. Here's my week's salary. Thank you. Funeral for Vandal. Nice. And not nice, but you know what I mean. Tomorrow is going to be the day. Don't let anything happen until then. Oh, who is this that we're meant to be protecting? I've actually completely forgotten. Can I find somewhere where it says what they want me to do? Oops, I don't remember. Anyway, labor market, we're going to hire someone for shift A, and it's going to be Calhoun. The name of detective, please join my shift A. Okay, perfect. Ah, maybe it's here. Take care of the hero. Bloomingdale, I thought it was him. Someone who just recently joined. Okay, we'll protect Bloomingdale, he's not even in the shift. 
But I guess that means he's not going to be in Shift 8 tomorrow either. Okay, that's fine. We can deal with this. No investigations? Okay. The King Louis nightclub massive fight. We received a call from the club manager who said a brawl broke out in the main hall involving, involving over 20 men. Security are keeping back because some of the combatants are carrying knives. Several wounded are already lying on the dance floor, but no one knows why mayhem broke out. We're going to send Purdy, the SWAT, the paddy wagon, because it sounds like we're going to have to catch a few people here. Then, I think I'm going to send Shaw, Asano, Subaki, and Austin, and I'll leave these three behind. We're going to send the full squad. This is about as good as we can send here in Freeburg. Purdy, never fail a case. Shaw, Asano, they're up there. They've done a pretty good job. Subaki as well was a humble, you know, intern at one point. Austin nearly lost her job, but now they're more than competent workers. Everyone in Shift B is more than a competent worker. They want more people. I'm going to refuse and see what happens. I need these people to protect for another mission. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Perfect. I was going to say, if we've sent squat five officers in the paddy wagon, this should be enough. And now we can do deal with this. An assault. Two teams walking their dog. Got into an argument. And eventually one of them unleashed the dog on the other one. The police were called by a girl who was riding her bicycle nearby. Uh, Kochi and Timpson. Go catch this dog fighting fool. Dog fighting has got to be one of the most scummy things on the planet, like like the lowest forms of the low. I've had dogs multiple times in my life, I think I've mentioned it before in videos, and they're the sweetest creatures, like so loyal to you, like very affectionate. Like cats sometimes like hide their emotions a bit and just look like arseholes and like 90% of the time, but dogs, they just don't, they can't hide it. They just love you. Oh my god, I nearly clicked something then. Yeah, yeah, dogs just love you. And to make dogs, like, fight and train them up, especially when you're having them, like, ripping apart cats and stuff. Like, if you ever hear stories about, like, cats being spray-painted, half the time it's because of dog fighting. Just people make me sick. Anyway, the boy is struggling on the ground, barely holding off the angry dog. That's trying to grab him by the throat. Hit the dog with a taser. Fire shots into the air. Pull on the dog's collar. Can we not just shoot the dog? Why would you taser the dog and not shoot the dog? I know I just said, like, I love dogs, but in this situation, the value of the human life, like, you have to immediately get this dog off. If I pull on the collar, the dog's just going to bite me. Tasering the dog seems stupid, because, like, that's designed for humans, not dogs. Like, that's probably going to kill it anyway. Or fire shots into the air. I'm going to fire shots into the air. The dog lets the boy escape, and the owner starts to flee. All, all the teenagers to halt, borrow the girl's bicycle, run after him. Order him to halt. We have a gun. What about the dog? Like, is there a dangerous animal now? Anyway, homicide at the church. Parishioner Maria Serpentine reported the sounds of gunshots inside the church. The bearded man in the hat entered the confessional, and then a minute later I heard a few gunshots. Then the man calmly left the booth, took off his hat and crossed himself, and sat down in a pew. I think he's praying. I can't use SWAT again, so we're going to use the next best thing, Purdy, Yancey, Shaw. I'm going to send the full squad here, I'm going to send as good as they've got, and we'll just leave Austin behind. Since I couldn't send SWAT in the first place. But man, this is really like ramping up right now. You know, it's not like boys that have spilt their ice cream over anymore. No, this is like murders now and like grievous body assaults. Anyway, the other cops are going to be back soon now. Timpson and Kochi are back. The homicide report. Offender caught. No officers murdered. Purdy's done it again. Loot found non-automatic weapon. Oh. It's a looter game now, is it? Bring to police station or ask Mafia to sell it. Ooh. I'm going to bring it to the police station. Because all that's going to do is make harder missions for me in the future. Another attempted murder. Hmm. St. John's Hospital. Linda Howard, her words slurred, said the dentist paralysed her face during her latest visit. The monster stuck me with some kind of poison. Arrest him. 
Kochi, Timson, Austin. I trust you have this one covered. Again, this sounds a bit fishy to me, but we're going to take the concerns of the public to heart. No requests so far of Christopher Sand as well. I like to see it. Purdy's back with her dream team. Okay, let's see what the attended murder was. False alarm, I thought it was. The girl's injected with normal painkillers. That's fine. It was worth checking anyway. Okay, we're going to get anything else late at night. Full squad is ready to deal with whatever you got to throw at me, game. Christopher Sands Ice Arena. An ice cream vendor noticed a suspicious black flag. A black flag. Yeah, it's pirates. Uh, black bag, which has been lying unsupervised on a bench for the past few hours. Could be a bomb threat. I think you have to send your most experienced here. We'll send the dream team out again. Basically, we split this shift B into two teams. Like, it's shift B, like, S tier. In fact, it's like double S tier and S tier. That's how good these guys are. I trust them. Get out to Mr. Sands Ice Arena. Sands Ranch over there. Okay. I was thinking if we could see... Oh, is it this on the map? Like we Officers arrived on the scene and observed there's something moving inside the bag. Stay back until Bomb Squad arrives. Offend the court? No more information. What was it? Okay. I assume we just safely detonated then. It's just treated as mission done. Perfect. I do have some other things in the affairs that I could really use as well, from what I remember. There's like the Sands, like investigation trap, the Mafia will falsify a special investigation, and the detective who arrives on scene will be killed. Crime, crime trap, we can make a prisoner get prisoner, a police officer get murdered, or we can intimidate members of the committee. Ooh. But I don't think for now we need any of this. Hey, everyone's back. Let's end the day. Perfect. Do I have any things I can assign? Nope, apparently not. No stripes. And we checkpoint. I think we're going to call it there for this video. We did two more days of, you know, police work. The core monument to be demolished by the summer's end. Kendrick won't succeed, Jack Boyd. And... And by won't succeed, Jack Boyd, I should have really spaced that out better. It means that Ke Francis Kendrick will not succeed us in our job, because he's left. And City Administration to finance Dance Festival. Very important news. But anyway, yeah, we'll call it there. Two days of work. Did we fail anything? Partially. We did catch in there, the suspect in one case. Unfortunately, we lost Birch Jr. Birch Jr. will be very sad to hear that, because we, you know, we fired him at some point. We fired him and his son got fired at. You don't like to hear it. But anyway, we did our best. If you're enjoying the series so far, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye.